right, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a fear empress. Kindly subscribe to this particular channel. Remember, it's in the previous video, I told you to subscribe to the channel. You like, no press it on the notification button. Send a bear any new video. Be a little bit more. Also, be to me actually. I told you that uh, work on certain things. I'm um, a big personality. Say, on this particular channel, people you love, sports journalists, football agents, coaches. Any other people are more a uh, sport, so subscribe to this particular channel. And then, Matua Nyakasame brother Ewaha, he is a football agent or a talent manager or a event planner, and also other things. Oh, yeah, and Obeka Mwasem, a dear chair, a room, a wall in studio, and then begin to come on how a journey a chassis, a decoy, a beer, or also a medium. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the young. But brilliant and intelligent, special being Daniel. Is it Junior? Right? Both you, both you, both you, both you, Junior. You would say, How are you? The last time we met, um, I think you invited me to, yeah, to uh, an be award something, yes, then yeah. I had to go because. The yeah. big man himself, a friend. No, because <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I've been following your words too as well, and I see like you are really doing great. So I, I feel like no, I have to see who this person is. Oh, thank Hence, you very much. Uh, right, yeah. and, and that time you know, say I was dying to see you because I yeah. sent you a message. Yeah. For some time, you say, Charlie, I admire your work and looking very young. Me, mm. the efforts I was putting, uh, I think say. It was nice to catch up and then know yeah. much about you. But then, uh, let's start our conversation. Who sure. is DVJ? Hmm, DVJ, you know, I've been, I've been getting these questions often. But DVJ stands for Daniel Boyfield Jr. Okay. Personality-wise, I would say um, adventurous, um, creative, um, open-minded. Okay. Um, I'm a calm person um, as well as a very courageous person wow. because I love to uh, approach the impossible. I love to make the impossible possible. Wow. So that's that's who DBJ is. Career-wise, I would say um, I'm a talent manager and event planner, and I work for a very reputable agency registered to the Netherlands FA. That's with my partner Sebastian Anderson. Um, he was um, a former scout of Manchester City, worked for them for six years and for Chelsea for four years. You know, we'll, we'll come to that, but yeah. I want you to tell us how the journey started, why you started schooling from infant. So, yeah, okay, so I began my primary education um, where I grew up from, Bowie, uh, that was at Daniel Royal Montessori. And then right from then, um, I moved to Accra Academy. Hello. 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 So I moved to Accra Academy, and to be frank with you, I feel like that's where everything began. Um, I picked up a few leadership roles whilst um, in school, whilst I was a student there, and um, I got to meet a lot of the the alumni of the school, and also participated in a lot of events mm -hmm. and then um, I found myself in in various um, um, various clubs okay. on campus and so that's where the sporting clubs or no no like I said uh, school clubs okay yeah and then um, that's where the interpersonal skills started coming from that's where I learned how to start networking mm -hmm. and, and all that and then from Accra Academy I moved to Valley View University mm -hmm. Um, Which year? That was in 2015. Oh, okay. I, I moved to Valley View University and I did computing science over there. Oh, right. And right after level 100, I had my internship at Multimedia Group Limited, which is Joy FM. Okay. And then in 20, that was in 2016, after level 100. And then after level 200, I found myself at EIB Network GH1. Um, I was there for two years, like for internship. Was it for IT works or yeah, for IT, okay. yeah, for IT, because of what I was offering um, in school at that as at that time, and so. But personally, I had my own podcast channel, okay. and um, you know, because I did my internship at Joy FM, it opened doors for me to like the various national teams yeah. that we have, and that's where I started um, having convos with like players from the national teams. And so when I began my podcast channel, 
it wasn't so difficult to like get players yeah. on my show and everything so i, I started as um i'll say um, a journalist a radio host on campus mm-hmm. but if you had a radio station okay. so that's where i i started from yeah well so would you say say because of over radio multimedia eib that is where we generated the love for journalism but that time you didn't know what you wanted but then no one yeah no growing up growing up i never knew what i wanted because i was doing so many things i uh, you will see me doing sound engineering you will see sound me engineering. sound engineering yeah i, I will go wow. after school i'll go and meet the sound engineer popular sound engineers at mallets and then he beats trying to learn from them and i'll try my hands on journalism even though you know I, I see myself to be um, a self-taught person. I, I, I love to learn things on, on my own. And so I, I got interest in those things. And that's why after level 100, I, I applied and I got my um, internship. I had my internship at Joy FM. Okay. And yes, I'll say I, this man, George Ado Jr., yeah. he really trained me when, when I was there. And I got to be on radio and then on TV. You know, we will put the picture attention. on it for people to yeah. see. You were very young at that time. Very, but very young. The very courage young. was there. Yeah, the you courage was there. To. Yeah, the will to do. <laughs> I really wanted to make things happen. That's DBJ. That's DBJ. <laughs> All right, but we've seen you managing political actors, yeah. athletes, yeah. social media influencers. Yeah. How, how are you doing that? Well, as individuals, yeah. as individuals, we are looking for what to do for a living or as a career which is very difficult to to settle on and um how i'm able to manage what i'm doing now i i didn't uh, find it in a day Uh, managing the diplomats managing um, athletes and then um, when it comes to social media as well and for me the passion is there you know when it comes to Talent management is it's, it's all about um, identifying like talents yeah. and recruiting the talent you want to manage or you want to help develop. It's it's a process, and so multitasking with these people, I know it's that's why I said it's a very big task. Yes, and and for sports, I have a team. Yeah. So in all the fields, I have a team. Okay. So when it comes to sports, I have like. Um, an entire team, let's say a team of scouts who are in like different regions in Ghana, and so they make the work like easier yeah. for me when it comes to um, identifying okay. talents at that side, and then when it comes to developing the talent and um, pushing the talent forward, um, that's where I I come in to to manage the athlete's career. Yeah. When it comes to social media, um, I was there and uh, I found out who Kali J was mm. and I got to meet him somewhere okay. and we had like a conversation, Great. a simple conversation. It took it took about five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes to convince Kali You were able to convince him. Papa, papa. Yeah, five yeah, yeah, minutes. Just five minutes. Kali J said so many people had approached him yeah. to be managed, but it just took five minutes for me to speak to Kali J. He got the whole concept and then we kept on meeting. We kept on meeting and in the end uh, we yes, agreed. Yeah, yeah, we agreed to work together. When it comes to the diplomacy side, you know, they come from different places, yes. and because they are new to this place, this country, they want to um, know how Ghanaians think. They want to know what oh, Ghanaians sure. want exactly. And so, like being a, a bridge between them and Ghanaians, mm-hmm. knowing what Ghanaians want is what brings up um, so many ideas. Yes. Um, when dealing with these diplomats and so they buy into my ideas and they are like i can work with this guy i i, I would really want him to be close to me mm-hmm. to work as a, a personal manager that's and good. yes so that's that's how all these things you help them understand the culture i mean it's, yeah. a, it's a different terrain so yeah. you need to yeah. know much about yeah. it but then it's more of building a bridge between Ghanaians and then their respective okay countries. So talk to me about how you met Sebastian and other football agents you work with. Okay, so this is how the whole story happened. So I had never traveled until 2019. I was in school one day and I had a call from Molares BA Mm -hmm. that DBJ 
you are going to South Africa, can you bring the passport? I was just in school in the middle of the semester. And I was scared because I know my dad is someone who is more about school, 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 mm-hmm, school. Mm-hmm. So telling my dad that this call has come in for me, like this traveling opportunity has come in, I know it was going to be a big no. Mm-hmm. But to my surprise, it was like, write a letter to your HOD. Mm-hmm. Tell him that you're traveling for two weeks. So my dad was the one who even advised but me. But I think uh, all parents love traveling, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that was the first time I traveled. Yeah. That was to South Africa. Okay. And after the works we went to do there, I was part of Bolare's um, media team. Yes. And so I was handling like behind the scenes and social media and all this. And so when we went there, he was very impressed. Okay. He was impressed with, uh, with the works that I did. And so the next trip was to France. Oh, okay. And now he had to drop a lot of people he took on the first trip. But luckily... Why? They didn't perform. I wouldn't say it was his decision. Okay. Yes, we, we did our jobs. And yeah. so he had to choose who he takes to the next trip. Yeah. And the next trip was to Europe. That was to France. And so I didn't say anything. I got a call again from his PA. DBJ, you are going to France. Kindly bring your... Passports. Really? That, that, that was. You had a very good relationship with Bola. Oh. Well, the people in the team had they, they were even there before I joined the team. Yeah. And so when when that call came in that you are going to France, like I was I was amazed, like I was shocked. <laughs> and so we got to France and we had this meeting. Bola had an interview with this football agent called Bernard Collignon. Yeah, Bernard. And during the meeting, Bola introduced me to Bernard Collignon. Bola told him, this is my guy, he loves football so much. And then mm-hmm. Bernard had a 30 minutes convo with me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, DBJ, I like you. I like the way you're ambitious. Mm-hmm. Bernard gave me money. Wow. Yes, he gave me money. He said, go to Ghana, organize a tournament for me, I will come. But you were young. I was young. That was in 2019. And so, I came back to Ghana. Bernard came to Ghana. The tournament was a success. He had four players. He was oh. taking four players to Europe. Mm-hmm. And then that's when COVID came. So the whole of 2020 to 2021, mid somewhere 2021, July, I think we couldn't travel. Okay. So we were just in Ghana, still managing mm-hmm. things, yes. managing stuff here. And then in 2021, that was um, somewhere in September, I traveled to Europe. Okay. This was also with Bolari, the same revealed with, yeah. with Bolari team. So after we this now this this trip was to Italy. So after we finished with uh, the job mm-hmm. that we were supposed to do there, I did my personal like tours. Okay. And so I, I visited I think six countries there because I knew players mm-hmm. that I started like working with from 2015 when yeah. I joined the national team and, and all that as a photographer. And so they invited me, they bought tickets for me to come and visit them. Wow. Yeah, and I'm grateful for that. It was a very nice experience. And in one of the trips, I was supposed to go to Amsterdam. Okay. And then um, I that's where I met Sebastian. Mm-hmm. So just like the way we had a convo with Bernard, we had the same conversation. Sebastian wanted me to organize a tournament for him. He would come to Ghana with his scouts mm-hmm. and then come and you know, get talent from here and take to Europe. So he did the same thing. I came back to Ghana and I organized uh, the tournament. Okay. for him he was so impressed he had about five players mm-hmm. he took three or four of them to europe for trials mm-hmm. and it was it was a success like it's it's been successful been very successful so after the first one then a lot of doors opened then i had a call from sebastian he was like my dad wants to see you and that his dad wants to see me now the dad was the sporting director of chelsea was once the sporting director okay. of Chelsea. The dad was the one, Frank Anderson, the one that signed Michael Lissian okay. and Togba, I see. Those, those days, to Chelsea. The dad was also the sporting director of Tottenham, mm-hmm. um, Anderlet, Feyenoord, you know, so many teams. And great man. He was the one that brought Brazil Ronaldo to Europe. Okay. So his first club, which was, I think, PSG. I see. Yeah. And so I had a meeting with the dad, and the dad was like, gentlemen, I see the great things you are doing. I would want you to be in a team wow. that was how they thinking i would want you to be in a team and i was like <laughs> this was like it was good for me I yeah was understand. just shocked and then we started working from there 
I got introduced to different clubs. Yeah. Then I got to meet FC Basel, mm-hmm. the owner, the sporting director, different, different teams. Oh. And throughout this day, like to this day, mm-hmm. a lot of sporting directors from different, different, different teams like oh, hit me up, contact me, you know, for possible collaborations. Do you think and, it's because of Sebastian? Well, for me, I wouldn't lie. Things, where, where, uh, whatever you are doing, it started from somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I believe if not going to Europe with Bola, yes. all these opportunities wouldn't yeah. Yeah. have come. And so, I'll give reverence to Bola. Yes. Mm-hmm. In terms of the football world, I would say Bernard Collignon gave me that platform to express exactly. what I could do. And then Sebastian opened many doors for me. In terms of like the football world, Sebastian opened the doors for me, and that's where more people started coming in. A I lot know of you people love started coming. I love him so much. I he's, know you love him. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the best. The best I've, I've, I've ever worked with. The best I've ever worked with. He's a nice person. A very nice yes. person. And and even how our meeting came up mm-hmm. was, I took one player to to Austria for trials, yeah. and. Sebastian had watched this player before mm-hmm. and really loved the player. Mm-hmm. And so we met. We were even talking about the player more. But then it turned out that we were going to be partners. As at the time we spoke, we were not partners. We were, we were mm-hmm. It was not even my friend. We were yeah. just speaking like somebody, uh, like a business partner. Yes. Yeah. But then it never, we never saw that it could, it could turn out to be this, like now, being his like partner. Mm-hmm. And the contrast and everything. Everything. That's good. Yes, and, and then it came about Empire, the DBJ Empire. DBJ Empire was established when I was in, uh, when I got to the uni. Mm-hmm. That's where DBJ Empire. Yes, so DBJ Empire is more about, it's more of event planning, um, media production, photography, videography, um, and then talent management. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and then my boss called me. He says you are really doing well in this sports field. Yeah. Why don't we register? Ah. Uh, agency why don't you register like an agency yeah. so we came up with empa sports agencies yeah. and we did all the registrations we could do possible and that's where it started from we started from scouting players having a selected side mm-hmm. and monitoring those players developing them and see which of those players could like move to the next yeah. level so it started like that and then we gradually invited so many scouts to come to Ghana to check out the players and and so yes. So I've seen you um, taking players from Ghana outside yeah. and these players are males. Yes. We are yet to see you say the few male players that we have. My question is, now that you have the connections, you have clubs, you visit so many clubs in Europe, are you planning of helping female football? Well, to football aside, I really love working with women. Okay. I see women to be very innovative, mm-hmm. very resourceful, very hardworking. Okay. And I'm having a, a justifier very soon in Tamale. And yeah. one of the people I'm training as scouts is a league, and she'll be with me in Tamale wow. for the justifiers. Okay. And so, back to the question. Yes, it's in the pipeline. Mm-hmm. It's my plan to see women football evolve get to a bigger level a higher level when i go back from europe um, recently i got in touch with the black men's coach nora okay and he we've spoken on phone but we are yet to meet in person to have um, a conversation and i feel part of the conversation will be about women football and how we can help develop like women football in ghana and also give them opportunities to um to clubs outside yeah. in Europe. I know for some of the clubs I know, mm. some of the clubs I have contacts with, yeah. they have the female side, okay. they have the women's side. And so getting opportunities for them should, like, women football be really developed. Like, it shouldn't be a problem. I would really be happy if you do that. Because you know I'm doing women's football. Yes, so. yes, I know. Senior <laughs> coach. Senior player. I know. But you know you're my boss. Because you've won a trophy. I'm here to win a trophy. Oh, you're the queen. You're the boss. You're the boss. Don't worry. One day you see it. It will happen live in college. I believe so. It will happen. Uh, so let me come to, to develop my, our country. my main topic. Yeah. That is about Fabrizio. Yeah. Just recently we saw a picture of you with Fabrizio and then some videos were circulating. Mm. Charlie, congratulations for that because it's not easy to meet Fabricio. 
You yes. know that some journalists are dying to eat him, but True. it's difficult for them. So yes. how did you do that? Okay, thank you very much for this question. So I remember last year on 5th of July, um, I texted Fabinzi on Instagram. He posted something on his story, mm-hmm. and I told him, I am meeting you very soon. I will show you this message <laughs> courage. when I meet Where you. Where did you get it from? I'm meeting you very soon. See, I'm not afraid to, to approach people. Yeah. I, I, I believe everything is possible in yeah. this world. If I say to my, myself, I'm meeting Messi today, I'm meeting Cristiano Ronaldo very soon, it will happen. That's how I have programmed my mind. Mm-hmm. I speak things into existence. And it works. And it works. I speak things into existence and it works. So, I tested Fabrizio on the 5th of July. Mm-hmm. No response. I was not even expecting a response. I just knew that one day I'll meet him. And then, on my birthday, which was 29th September last year, yeah. I had a meeting with my partner in Amsterdam, Sebastian. Okay. And it was about football. And Fabio's name like just popped up, you understand. I go to my hotel only to see Fabio has followed me on Instagram. Wow. Yes. And then I was surprised. I was like, wow, thanks for the follow back. And he was like, you are welcome, my friend. So that was it. That was where everything started from. Wow. And I knew I'll be coming back to Ghana soon. So that was somewhere in September, October. <laughs> and in one of my trips, Italy was not, Fabio is based in Italy. Okay. And it wasn't part of my itinerary. So I was like, I want to come and meet you. So he was like, he will try because he's so busy. 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 Working 24-7, traveling. Mm-hmm. You, won't, you won't get him. Mm-hmm. So I said no. I didn't get uh, the response I wanted to hear. Okay. So I booked my trip. I booked the trip to Italy. Mm-hmm. At that time, I was with Kali J. You didn't inform him? No. I booked the trip to Italy. I got to Italy and I said, Fabrizio, I'm here in Milan. So I was there the whole day. He sent a voice note saying, oh, my friend, welcome to Milano. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still busy. I'll let you know if I can meet you. So the whole day, I couldn't meet him. It wasn't possible. I had a meeting the next day in Switzerland, so I had to leave Italy to Switzerland. So I couldn't meet Fabrizio as at that time. Mm-hmm. And then after all my errands, all my rounds, I came back to, to Ghana. And then I went back to Europe in December. I didn't tell him I was coming to meet him. I made a package for him yeah. because I knew that I would meet Fabrizio. Mm-hmm. I would meet him. So I made a, a, a little package for him. Mm-hmm. I, I took it along with me when I was traveling. Yeah. And when I got to Spain, because I was going to be in Spain for that whole month, I took yeah. um, one player there for, for trials. So I got to Spain and um, I also had meetings elsewhere. And Italy was one of the places I was yeah. going to have. Uh, my meetings and so I booked my flight from Madrid to to Milan mm-hmm. and when I got there I had two meetings okay. one of the meetings one of the people I met was Fabrizio's best friend mm-hmm. I didn't know he was Fabrizio's best friend I didn't even know he knew wow. Fabrizio yes. so I told him there's this man here in this country Fabrizio <laughs> and then he was like Fabrizio that's, that's my you. best friend <laughs> yeah, that's my best friend you want to meet the him the door was just close to you the door was just close to me <laughs> I didn't even know that man knew Fabrizio. Mm-hmm. You understand? Because it was just a meeting, like yeah. about football and, and, and giving opportunities to like Ghanaian talents to come yeah. to Italy, yes, for opportunities. And so, and so immediately I texted Fabrizio. I said, Fabrizio, I'm in Italy. But Fabrizio was not in Italy by then. He was yeah. in the Maldives. It was during the World Cup mm-hmm. time. So he was in Maldives enjoying like holidays mm-hmm. and, and all that. And then, I was like, okay, when are you coming back to Milan? Or when are you coming back to Italy? I was texting him. You were pressuring him. I was giving him a lot of pressure. No, Fabrizio knows. I, was, I gave him a lot of pressure. So, as at the time I went to Italy, it wasn't possible. So, I went back to Spain. Mm-hmm. And then, on the 1st of January, okay. I had a message from Fabrizio. He was like, is it possible for us to meet on the 5th? Which was, going to, which was on the Friday, 5th of January. Okay. Is it possible for us to meet? I didn't think twice. I said yes. I booked my flight. I sent it to him. And wow. he said, okay, good. Let me know when you come to Milan. I'll give you a location where we meet everything. And then we talk. And so I booked my flight. And then I went back to Italy. So he sent a message. The location everywhere. I went there. After five minutes, I saw this man, this famous journalist, coming towards my way. 
and was like my friend and then he gave me a hug finally 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 we met and then we went to sit down the the bar the mini, the mini bar and then he started having like discussions he started telling me so many things mm-hmm. about you know his life you know yeah. how he's the only boy of his parents wow. and he has to visit his parents every week like once a week at least he has to travel how he has to combine it with work mm-hmm. he's very humble mm-hmm. Fabrizio is a very humble person he the one the, his best friend the one i went to meet he has mm-hmm. not even met his best friend in like five months four to five mm-hmm. months yes his best friend his own best friend he has not met him in five months they should tell you that Fabrizio is a very busy person and so having the opportunity to meet him was like should I say a blessing yes. to meet him because it was not just about meeting Fabrizio, mm-hmm. but it was more about bringing like opportunities from somewhere to my country, wow. and that's where like that's how the whole conversation took place. He spoke about coming to Ghana, him coming to Ghana, wow. and he really liked the idea. And there's one thing he told me: he said, if I come to Ghana, I wouldn't like to be here for just 24 hours. I want to be in Ghana for a whole week. One week. One week. Wow. And I was like, don't worry, Fabrizio. Bring him. Bring oh, him that, to Ghana. That's, that's, that's like, I'll was, I was put it into existence again. And it will come. come. <laughs> so that's like where now my next big project would, that's what my next big project would be, yeah. um, bringing Fabrizio to Ghana. And so, you know, this transfer season, he's very busy. Yes. And so maybe right after the transfer, we, we speak about the possibility of him coming to Ghana. And then we look at his itinerary, what he's coming to do in Ghana, and and if he buys into the idea, for it sure, will show up. Yes, and that that is one of and we all support of my projects. Yeah, <laughs> we all for support. Thank so you. after the interview, you have to speak some positive. Sharp, sharp. So this time for me. Don't worry. So that in the near future, I will become like you. Don't but worry. then, after you posted the um, video and then the pictures, I saw some comments, mm-hmm. and I I normally read your tweets yeah. a lot. Yeah. And. There was this particular guy, Bongo Ideas. I know you know him. I don't know him. <laughs> Who is that? You don't know Bongo Ideas. Oh. So he, he just criticizes whatever he sees on the social media. Yes. Yeah. Whether positive or negative, mm. he just criticizes. So I saw him commenting under your tweet. As yeah. Okumu Fabrizio, you, you, you said it that you spoken with him about yeah. me coming to Ghana and all that. He said it's not true. Oh, okay. We were just writing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just lying. Ah, that's what he said. Yes. Yeah, so when you see such comments like that, okay. how do you react? Well, a lot of people take inspiration from yeah. most of the things I, I post. Mm-hmm. And as I said, this generation is now all about social media. Yeah. And so when it comes to social media, you should learn how to take things mm-hmm. like at heart. Yeah. You should learn how to apologize learn when to say i'm sorry learn when to be apologetic and learn when to attack back um for me i don't really focus on social media that much okay um i focus on bringing opportunities to Ghanaians. Sure. that is where my passion lies mm-hmm. and for fabrizio if i posted that caption and fabrizio didn't come to comment on on it then Maybe it would have been false, but the fact that Fabrizio commented on that particular caption means the meeting did happen, and yeah. whatever we spoke about and whatever I posted on my my page um, also meant that it's it's happened. Yes, because he confirmed he confirmed. But that, that's good. Yes, that's good. yes, and so for for critics, it's it's their job to 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 critique. But um, I don't really know the one you're talking about, but everybody is in, entitled to like his or mm-hmm. her opinion. And so yes. And then my next question will be on. You brought some scouts to Ghana, Sebastian and Bernard and other people. Now you look at our football fraternity. Do you mm. think as a country, Ghana as a country, are we doing anything possible to help these talents? I mean, exploit their talents. Well, I don't know what the people on top. Uh, doing their doing their job um, before they were voted into power, yeah. they stated things they were going to do for Ghana football, mm-hmm. and if it is happening, um, I don't know. 
But one thing about me is I don't really like to go into sports politics. I'm just in my little corner doing my my own thing, trying to bring opportunities to, to Ghanaians. And so if, it, if we are talking about Ghana football, to be honest, I've watched a lot of games like yeah. from different, different leagues. And I would say Ghana football is far behind. We are far, 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 far behind in terms of like football development. Okay. We are far behind. And you know, the kind of mentality the Europeans have mm -hmm. concerning like this particular sport. If we as like football people can also have that kind of mindset, mentality on how to approach our football and how to push our football, I think Ghana football will be back to where it was like in those days, you know. We have a lot of talent. We really have a lot of talent. But the opportunities for this talent is what is missing. That is what is missing. And so in my little corner, with what God has given me, the people that um, I'm connected with yeah. out there, I'm trying in my own way to bring opportunities to, to, to the talents. That's and so, good. yes, I wouldn't want to speak about... You know, I understand your point. I yeah, understand your yeah. point. But um, I also know that you have a very good background in photography, yes. blogging, yes. but I don't know. I think I'm not seeing you Much doing, doing that. Okay, so so photography and blogging started in my early days in in uni. Yeah. Um, in fact, when I was young, I really loved handling cameras okay. and 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 all that. And so it really started when I had my internship at uh, Multimedia Joy FM. I was part of the sports team, and I used to follow them. Um, to sporting events. Anytime like there were events, maybe the national team is playing or maybe they are training at Pram Pram, mm -hmm. I used to follow them to cover um, the events that were happening. And so I started with sports photography. So that's where I started from, both on campus and during my internship. Mm -hmm. So I used to cover um, I used to cover events of the national teams, mostly the under 17, the under 20 national team okay. um, during competitions, like anytime they play. As well as the Black Stars itself, I, I got an opportunity to come and cover, take pictures of the Black Stars, the national team. Accreditation wasn't a problem. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. So, anytime I went to the stadium, there were a lot of photographers lined up there, wanting to enter the stadium. Okay. And I knew I didn't have accreditation, even though I was having an internship with Joy FM, I would have my intern tag, it didn't mean I was accredited to yes. enter inside the stadium. And this man, Called Langabel. 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 <laughs> Langa Langa. Langabel Our King. Drama. <laughs> that that guy is, is so special. He's been, he's been very he doesn't know how much he's helped me mm -hmm. in my life. Oh. Because most of the pictures I took of the players yeah. really made the players fall in love with me, like as yeah. in yeah. my job. Yeah. And that created a bond between me and the players. Yes. And in those days, the players would buy DVD. I want you to, they'll be like, they want me to come and visit them in their countries. Mm. They'll buy tickets for me to come and visit them wow. for us. They really love, they really, really wanted to have that kind of relationship. I wouldn't want to mention it. Some of yes. So players like Rafa Dramina, Yao Yebua, Samo, yes, Samo Tete. Samo Tete was the very first like professional. Samo Tete texted me on Instagram. That was in 2015 during the New Zealand under 20 World Cup. Yeah. And he was like, I want to be your friend. Can we be brothers? That's where everything started from. And then when I met him again in the national team, then it just grew, grew. The relationship just grew stronger. You know, it became stronger. But Langa Girl really, really helped me in terms of every time holding my hand into the stadium, like onto the pitch yes, to take pictures. Amazing. And the blogging aspect, I'm not, I wasn't really a blogger, I was more of a photojournalist. Right. And so when I take pictures of the national you team, tell a story I tell a story it. about it and then I post it on website, my joy online. As at that time, I was with Joy, yeah. so I had the opportunity to post on that website, my joy online, Ghana Soccer Net, so many websites, like sports websites, and it really boosted like my CV right. a lot. And so I was there and um, the biggest tertiary awards came came calling that I was nominated for it. And in that particular year, I was nominated for seven seven categories. Wow. It was crazy. So if I'm going if people are voting anyway. for me, I don't in the in the end I ended up with the student photographer of the year because of what I really did in that year in terms of 
So my photography was based on sports. Yeah. Sports photography. That's what I was doing. And then I tell a story, post it on websites. So that's how come I got that award. And I won it the following year again because it continued. And then I got to a point, I said, let me stop. Because now another door had opened, yes. which was now football management. Mm -hmm. And that's where now, um, that's what I'm doing now. So football management, that is all. Or you may want to look into different I mean, departments as well. Or football. Football, any like other fo thing? anything football. Mm -hmm. It's it's in the pipeline. Okay. Um, definitely one day I would love to have my own academy. Wow. I would love to get my own academy. But for now, it's I'm concentrating on on helping like talent yeah. from our countries uh, from our country, and um, I'm interested in in going into those places like the rural mm -hmm. places. Yeah. Um, to, to, to spot talents and then see how best we can help them. Okay. Yes. And so, so when you travel, do you read on football management, talent management, or event planning? When you travel to Spain, Europe, other places? Okay. I mean, you so that? I'm more of a practical person okay. than a theory person. Okay. And so I love to learn in practice. Yeah. And so I can travel to Spain and um, be with maybe a chief scout of a team okay. and he's showing me different things mm -hmm. i need to learn yeah. about sporting talent mm -hmm. and the mentality of players as well mm -hmm. and the kind of qualities they need in their leagues okay. because you might be not you might not be too tall okay. but you might you can you are very good maybe you are a striker mm -hmm. but in spain they have a certain height requirement yeah. for a striker maybe you are five eight but mm -hmm. they need a six two yeah striker so you can be very good five eight but doesn't mean you can fit in their system maybe yeah. another league okay. you can fit into that league but not that particular league structure and so when i go i learn more about the league learn more about the kind of players they want in their leagues and wow. that really helps me a lot when scouting yeah. when i come back to my country and i'm scouting that really helps me a lot to spot talents and know that okay this one would fit in the Portuguese league, mm -hmm. this will fit in the Belgian mm -hmm. league, this will fit in the Spanish league, and so on and so forth. And so when I go to Europe, it's not just about going to watch games, it's about learning the game mm -hmm. and networking, creating more contacts, because that is what is important. Some people have the contacts, but they keep the contacts to themselves. But I want to share the contacts I have with everyone who deserves it. Because you never know tomorrow. Yeah. You are here today, tomorrow you are gone. What did you do? Exactly. All right. So we are bringing our conversation to an end, but I know you have a program that will be held in Tamale, right? Yeah. Next month. Yeah. So I want you to talk about it briefly. Okay. So with that particular um, event, so it's a justifier. We really, uh, make sure to organize um, a justifier. Last year we had over two thousand six hundred people registering for a justifier. Our organizing. Yeah. I organized in Accra. We hit that limit 2,600 and we had to close the registration. <laughs> more people wanted to register, so we could have been more. Yes. So this year we are doing it in, in Tamale. Okay. And we are expecting a huge number as well wow. um, of players coming to Tamale. It's yeah. okay. in, in collaboration with um, the Honorable Al Hassan Suhuyuni. Yeah. And he's been very, very helpful in, in the process. Yeah. and. My team is ready. We are going all out there to pick the best talents and see how best we can develop and help those particular talents we we see. And I'm going with my my team right. and of trusted scouts and my media team as well. I trust you. Yeah, as well. And so yes, Tamale should 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 expect a very good event and yeah. the players should just um come out in their in their numbers because they never you never know mm -hmm. you never know you never know where your next destination mm -hmm. might be in two years three years you never know and so we are urging all of them to come out in their numbers and do what they have to do thank you DBJ, for this opportunity thank you very much coach if you are impressed <laughs> uh,